These are the things that lead to bigger problems when it comes to customer service and issues with your stakeholders. You don't fix the problem quickly. It just kind of festers along. You've got to analyze the situation. Then what happens when you don't fix it quickly? Maybe another problem comes up, and that one gets put to the back burner. So then it just kind of stays stagnant, continues to grow. You don't communicate with people when there's an issue. Communication is absolutely important, and that's a challenge. I mean, we've got a diverse workforce. You've got four generations in the workforce. And how you talk to a staff member that's 21 or a staff member that's 55 in <coughs> communication is completely different. The 21 year olds like tweet that to me, man. I'll just get it on my phone. You know, where the guy that's 55, you're like, well, can I get an email for that? Can you explain it to me? And what's the policy and the rationale behind that? Those are challenges that we have when dealing with our stakeholders, not internally and externally as well. We're not accessible as management when there's an issue. You have to have that door open. Whether the problem is big or small, it's important to know about it. Because if people shut it down and they come to you with an issue, they kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, it's really not important, I'm a little busy. What's going to happen when something big's going on? Do you think they're going to come and tell you? Probably not. Again, your internal stakeholders will give you more information about the perception and tempo of your organization. Take advantage of that. They, somebody has to be assigned to monitors, and it boils down to accountability. Uh, and just the bottom line is, is people who don't listen to their stakeholders. They'll sit there and nod their head, yeah, that's good, I need to know that, blah, blah, blah. Life goes on. Anyway, how's the weather today? Or who you like for the Super Bowl? You detract or you turn around your comments, you get them off the subject, that gets them frustrated, they don't look at you, they don't respect you, and all of a sudden, now things start to go haywire. And why does this happen? It's about these key things here that, that go wrong when you start making mistakes. People don't think you have a reliable service anymore. They lose confidence in you. They don't respect you anymore. They don't think you're an efficient operation, maybe. Or you're not consistent. Well, I handle this person one way, but I'll handle this person another way. Or you just have policies and practices that are completely outdated. But people are doing it because what do they say? Well, it's a policy manual. It says, right, I've got to do it that way. But it's wrong. Why didn't you say something about it? That's not how we're doing it. How long has it been that way? Oh, I don't know, six months a year? It's very difficult in the management realm sometimes to see everything that goes on. And if you embrace those internal stakeholders, when there's a change or shift, and again, it just is a natural progression in business, you make the adjustment. You have to be nimble with that. And it's not, it's not a bad thing if somebody's doing something away or different than what your policy says. Just make it your policy if that's how it has to be practiced at the end of the day. People are very reluctant to make change. Change is difficult. Nobody likes it. You know, people get scared. They're uncomfortable with it. Uh, it's, it can be challenging in our industry. So what do you do? How do you, how do you identify the issues? What are the warning signs when you're getting your feedback and you're acting with your stakeholders out there? You start to get more frequent little complaints. Little things start to annoy people a little bit more. Why is that? Because something may not be been addressed. So now this compounds onto that, that compounds onto this, and next thing you know, Something that's so small of an issue winds up becoming a mountain because you just ignore it. And ignoring it isn't going to make it go away. The tension, the, uh, the partner meetings start to stop or you call them up. Hey, is everything good? Yeah, everything's good. Click. Take that as a warning sign. You need to meet face-to-face meet -face with your stakeholders it, whenever you can. Now, it doesn't mean you go meet the CEO of the hospital every day to say hello. But you make it a point within your day or within your supervisor's day to interact with key stakeholders in your community. Constant misunderstandings. That's probably more of an internal issue when it comes to policy, but they don't understand something. I didn't think it was that way. I thought we'd do it this way. Again, it goes back to the policy issue. Well, this is how we've been doing it. Nobody just brings it to your attention. And you stop getting those calls. No, they don't want to talk to you anymore. When you have a great relationship with somebody, it's like your family. You, you know, we keep in touch with our families. If all of a sudden, your brother stopped calling you. How many? Uh, maybe some people won't, but my brother stopped calling me. I'd probably call him and say, "Hey, what's up? What's going on?" You know, I mean, I haven't heard from you in a week. Little things like that. When you have constant communication and interaction with stakeholders, and that spreads out, now it may not be indicative of a problem, but what you should do is it shows them that you're engaged and you took notice to that. Oh, geez, that was nice. You know, they haven't talked to them in a while. They made the effort to call me. Those things are important because if you don't do that, then they eventually forget. Or 
How many times has this happened? Nursing homes, for one, there seems to be a lot of turnover in nursing administration. All of a sudden, you're dealing with one contact, next week, another contact. But if you lose contact with that facility, they might go through three or four nursing directors sometimes, it seems. And then, all of a sudden, you go and meet with them and you say, hello, oh, when did you start? Oh, I've been here four months, or I just started yesterday. Oh, what happened to Millie? Oh, Millie's been gone for six months. Huh, I mean, I should have known that. Those are the key things there that uh, you want to do. And, and all of this does relate to employee turnover. If you have a culture in your organization that is successful, the financial means is not the motivator to, to go to work. There are people, and there are surveys that have been done that clearly show that, that people about work-life balance and employer-employee satisfaction are far more important than the 50 cents an hour that they can make at the other place, or a dollar an hour that they can make in another place. Because if they're not treated with, with respect and dignity and honesty, they don't want to be part of your organization. And then it goes back to, like I said, they're your best ally. Hey, this place is great. I love working for them. They treat us great. They do this. They do that. You know, yeah, but you can work for X for $10 an hour or more. Now, that's obviously a big number, but for a couple dollars, you might say, you know what? I'm happy there. You ought to work there. You know what? I'm going to give it a shot. Thanks for the recommendation. Okay. So, how do you get started on this? You have to start with a customer improvement plan. You have to start to get the feedback. If you're not doing a survey, uh, again, Jay's presentation will kind of talk a little bit.